You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, professionalleft.blogspot.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button on our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 18th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the furthest point away from both sides do it on this earth, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Yeah, by the time this drops, we're going to be 12 hours away from our wedding anniversary. That's right. And we've been married for six years, so we're still newlyweds. <laughs> and you know what we did the week of our uh, of our wedding? Uh, we podcasted. Yes, we did. <laughs> On the day of our wedding, we had a yes, podcast we did. drop. So, yeah. like, don't, don't listen to that, folks. Don't listen it's, to that uh, show. But yeah, you know but we, what you we, could we, listen to? You could listen to episode 388. You could. You totally could. That Episode 388, I was listening to old podcasts driving back and forth from Augustana College this week because we had to take Junior Dude is now there ensconced as a freshman. Yeah. Doing all the orientation welcome week stuff he has to do. And uh, he's there and mom drove away and left him and, you know, I'm doing okay. Uh, but on the road to and from, I listened to some of our old podcasts and I happened to listen to episode 388 and you know what we were talking about last what, May, Driftglass? What? What in the world were we talking about last May? We were May? talking about the Republican Party being the Republican Party of the Confederacy. Really? And that oh, I... so much of what, uh, Trump's base and what the, the base of Trump's support is about is about white male nationalism, supremacy, testosterone, Nazi bullshit. Yeah. And we so called let's just, it. We already let's called just, it. <laughs> let's just not do a podcast this week yeah. and just put on let's some music. Put everybody go ahead and listen back Direct to them our, over to episode three our catalog. Yeah. No, I think we got plenty to talk about. <clears throat> well, it's been a busy week. And, and we, um, did, we I, are podcasting uh, Friday mid afternoon. Morning. No, mid afternoon, nope. Friday. Friday morning. <laughs> He's going to pretend it's Friday morning. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're podcasting Friday morning. Uh, and it's been very hectic and there's a lot of crazy shit happened this week and we postponed it all the way till Friday morning <laughs> to get everything in. Yeah, so before sure. we roll through the week, which is going to just be coming at you just bullet style, bam, 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 because there's so much crap happened. I want to lay down one rock solid prediction. You can bet the mortgage on this and that is Steve Bannon ain't going anywhere. Just wah, wah. Put it, wah, 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 no, <laughs> Steve Bannon, you have to go away now, which reminds me, uh, we would once again like to welcome back our presenting sponsor mm -hmm. and now the single most profitable business in Washington, D.C. That's where the good Lord split you, emergency farewell party planners. Mm -hmm. I imagine a big, a big swastika cake is being rolled out right now for Steve That's Bannon. Right. That's right. And they also have special cakes that are, are shaped like cardboard boxes with all your stuff in them. Yes, they do. <laughs> Yes, they do. <laughs> Little SS candles. Uh -huh. It's just adorable. Uh -huh. What they can do at a moment's notice is amazing. And Steve Bannon looks like the kind of guy who ordered every day from technically, it's a salad. Yeah, he did. Um, <laughs> technically, it's a salad every day for lunch. <laughs> I just want Twinkie and Scotch for yep. lunch again. Yep. I Actually, I think he is the portrait that Mnuchin or, or, or the Mooch hung in his closet uh, that aged horribly while the Mooch you know, re retained his youthful vigor. So oh, I think I he's, see. Oh. he's someone's Dorian Gray portrait. Uh -huh. He I'm is, and he just keeps getting more and more kind of Ugh. decaying. Yeah, Ugh. it's it's pretty bad. It's it's taken a toll. Being yeah. Steve Bannon has taken a toll on on Steve Bannon for yeah. sure. Uh, well, and and this uh, th now there's a lot of uh, uh, speculation and uh, many Beltway people running around in circles, flapping their arms, wondering what this all means. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean squat. No. <laughs> Here's what it means. The racist president fired his racist hype man because he was becoming too much of a liability. And now or the racist because he hype was man. taking taking stage room away from Trump. Yeah, exactly. And and that's the that's the violation of the code of conduct that can that cannot be withstood. If you are taking attention away from Trump or if you cross him in public, then you're fired. If you do in any other way, uh, you know, side with Nazis or, you know, screw somebody else's wife or whatever. All, that's All that loyalty to Trump is the only thing that matters. And so uh, Steve Bannon was on the phone talking 
talking trash about Trump and North Korea. To the American prospect. Yeah. Because you know what I do. Yeah. Uh, as a uh, 30-year veteran of the of the media, Blue Gale, um, <laughs> yes. what I do when I want to um, unburden myself mm-hmm. and, and blurt out lots of really incendiary remarks is I call up uh, the most opposition newspaper I can think of mm-hmm. and just spill it all. Yeah. <laughs> After drinking, I assume a fifth of something really. Well, really and I'm sorry, the American Prospect is not the Nation magazine. No. no I, I I saw that on Twitter yesterday that there were people saying, "Well, what do you want? The American Prospect that's owned by Bolsheviks, or that's owned by, you know, that's run out of the no. George no, Soros of... liberal warehouse." And everybody's like, "No, not no. exactly. That you're is not." Think of the ugly reader. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's not it is not anti-establishment or, you know, <laughs> I remember well, it's not pro Nazi blue gal. You know, I've been it's not objectively pro Nazi. No, so. it's not objectively pro Nazi. I was think I've been thinking a lot, of course, about my college days this week. And one of the things that uh, happened in my uh, student union was there would be hippies walking around the front of the student union with literally a communist newspaper they were selling. Yeah. And. One of my friends was a Reagan Republican. I ha- I have to admit that. Uh, for color, I had this friend who was a Reagan Republican. And uh, he he was approached by a hippie in front of the student union asking if he'd like to buy a communist mo- newspaper. And he held up the Boston Globe and said, I've already got one. Oh. <laughs> So those memories, you know, good times, yeah. good times good time. back in the day when the innocent had the, those innocent salad days, innocent salad days. Not, absolutely. Not technically it's a salad. That's a no, totally that's different matter. technically a salad. Uh, and I noticed that red state now has gone uh, a whole lot of people are, are uh, finding that lifeboat in their garage that they can right. just pull right out and jump into and say, I was never with him or. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. Because I found the garage. Yeah. yeah. And red What's state bit... is yeah. is now red state has was consistently pro anti-Trump during the election. But, you know, sure. once he won, what are you going to do? We need our tax cuts, right? Uh, here's the line from Red State, your class. Tell yeah. me what's wrong with this sentence. Uh huh. You cannot continue as the party who isn't quite ready to toss the white supremacist movement. Uh, I Obviously, now, there's a theme here, Blue Gal. <laughs> I believe the sentence is, you cannot continue as the party who isn't quite ready to toss the white supremacist movement salad. Salad, yeah, yes. which means you know tickling their undersides with your mouth. Um, and and who is this you they're talking to? Because yeah, I, well, I don't know who is this. Why? What? Not I, my I, party. And I, and I gotta say, the the person that I have admired most this week is mm-hmm. Reverend Barber. Oh yeah, who has continually pointed yeah. out that. You can pretend that you're not with the Klan and you can pretend that you're not with Nazis and hold hold your hands up in the air and say, oh, my God, this is so horrible. Yeah. But if you are for voter ID and gerrymandering and yeah. think it's perfectly OK for te- ha- to have tax cuts for billionaires while 20 percent of American children live in poverty, uh, you're a white supremacist. Yeah. yeah. So if you're going to yeah. toss white supremacy and say we're not that party go ahead we'd love to see it well but you're not and your policies show it and and if you've been on a bus i I wrote this on on my blog somewhere like 12 years ago (laughs) um you know long ago everything that you hear on this podcast everything that we talk about you and i both wrote a decade Yeah, we did during the bush this is absolutely this is what's so incredibly uh boring and pedantic about about this discussion not between you and i but just Watching the rest of the world having literally no short term memory because they don't remember the Bush administration ever happened at all. Right. So there was all this all of a sudden realization that oh my god, uh, the Republican Party's full of assholes. When did yeah. that happen? Yeah. Right. Um, but it, I wrote this a long time ago. Which, look, if you're on a bus, if you get on the bus and you look to your left and there's a com, uh, there's a there's a Klansman and you're right there's a, a Nazi and there's a skinhead driving it, maybe you're on the wrong bus. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if you stay on that bus and go and go and go and go and go for 30 years, you know what? Pardon me for not being able to distinguish you from everybody else on the fucking bus. Right, right. Because you never right. got off because right. it was taking you where you wanted to it go. It was taking you where you wanted to go. And so you're and you know more what? than willing to ride with those people uh-huh. to get what – and they still are. That's oh, yeah. the thing that now – and I do want you to talk about your uh, Eugene Robinson post from today because uh, I read I, that and I admired it. Uh, Eugene Robinson wrote a column saying, you know, history will remember the people who will... stood with Trump at yeah. this moment in time. Oh. Mitch McConnell <laughs> is not talking to Paul Ryan about impeachment. 
They're not no. they're not planning that. No. They're planning on how can we get these tax cuts through before the end of the year. That's what they're talking about. That and the, the, yeah. The, well, the famous quote: "History will little little note nor long remember." Yeah. yeah. What we say here, but the, but what we do here? No, 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 no. History. Um, I had to tell Eugene Robinson, uh, you know, who I call Gene now because we're in the same business, basically. <laughs> um, that I I like his work and he's a perfectly nice man, but he's completely wrong about this. History at history's out chasing rainbows somewhere. It's playing with puppies far away. It has it, it hasn't been present on the scene for a long time. What we have instead of history is is our pundits, mm-hmm. and pundits have consistently reset the big history clock to 1201 every single time the Republican Party has committed an unforgivable Absolutely. act of atrocity. Yep. Every single fucking time for the last 25 years, every goddamn time after the Clinton administration, when they made it very clear that we, we don't want to impeach Bill Clinton, but we have to because every president needs to be held to this incredibly high standard where even if what they do is just, you know, mildly annoying. Mm-hmm. Even if it's a, even if you just get a whiff of something through some crackpot magazine, you got to investigate it. You got to put a special prosecutor on the case, and if we find anything wrong anywhere, got to got to impeach the guy. Got got to do it. All of that was jettisoned the minute George Bush stole the election in 2000. Every last bit of it, all yep. of it, and and the people who should have been minding the store uh, and weren't was were journalists. Mm-hmm. The people who should have been say, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, our job is to report on what powerful people do and do not and what they're hiding and what they don't want you to know. And every one of you motherfuckers who, who were screaming for Clinton's blood over nothing are now completely cool with George Bush lying, stealing an election and lying to the wrong war and the, the, all the other atrocities. Yep. And then, of course, right after the Bush administration, they jettisoned everything they said. They said, no, 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 no. If you're time of war president, you can you know, you shut up and obey him. That's your mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. The minute Bush mm-hmm. left office, suddenly... All that was out the window, and it happens over and over and over again. And the cause of that is, of course, the, the the direct cause of that is because the Republican Party are full of racists and liars. And getting back to the statement about can, can't continue to be the party of white supremacy. Mm-hmm, Look, mm-hmm. if all the bigots and all the Nazis and all the morons and all the gun nuts and all the, the creepy anti-science evangelicals and all the homophobes left the Republican Party tomorrow, there would be 400 guys – in bad golf pants, bitching about taxes. I would That's say, it. you know, that you might you might be lucky enough to get mm, nine to eleven percent of the vote. Yeah, yeah, because they're just yeah. because it's just a bunch of bankers. wealthy, it's, yeah, wealthy white bankers, yeah, plutocrats who want zero taxes on everything mm-hmm. they do, and mm-hmm. they found and this, lower this, regulations because yeah. their companies will make more money. It's all about and making they, money. They yeah. invest their money for decades and decades on building this army of imbeciles and bigots and reprogrammable meat bags. To do their bidding, to do whatever they want. Well, so every but, year... but that's what I want to ask you because uh-huh. it seems to me that the fact that Shelley Adelson has not jettisoned the Republican Party at this point as a bad investment and said, "Look, mm-hmm. I'm because he's one of the five families, right? That right. basically owns the Republican Party. There's five people you can name. You know, the Mercers. Shelley Adelson is one. There's a there's oh, a number that the." the the um, guy from Home Depot, you know, they, yeah. these guys are the one, the Koch brothers, the one, yeah. these are the guys that shell out millions upon millions of dollars. And they said that their line in the sand was, we're going to withhold, the, the Koch brothers said, we're going to withhold $400,000 of campaign money that we were going to spend on re- reelecting Republicans next year. And we're going to hold off until we get repeal of Obamacare and our tax cut. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so they've, they've put their money aside. But they're not jettisoning the party that they own because it's that's their party. This is their right. play. You know, this is this is the tool that they own. They own yeah. this hammer, right? Yeah, they they cannot self terminate. You know, no, they, no. They, they and the can't... fact that they they and they knew everybody knows that there is this. You know, whether it's a wing or the core or the base or however you want to put it, that there is a large segment, noisy segment, mm-hmm. of the Republican Party that is racist. Right, that's the and plan. So, and that's the point. I mean, that is, and it's been on purpose amplified and magnified by having a Democratic black president. That has and been, by having Fox News and hate radio working well, that group for twenty years, and especially for the past eight. Yep. But now you've got 
and and this is a lot of African American commentators have said this, you know, when you stir Nazis into the mix, it becomes a much easier thing for Americans to stand aside from that and say sure. because you don't have any personal culpability with being a Nazi in right. terms of in terms of we have, you know, a heritage of slave ownership and Maybe yeah. your great, 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 great grandfather was in the South and you don't want to paint yourself with that mm -hmm. brush. But Nazis, you can absolutely say that's America's enemy and, and say that's a bridge too far. Shelley Adelson hasn't said that's a that Donald Trump. He's concerned. You know, he's doing that that sure. game that a lot of senators are doing. They're, they're very concerned about it. But they, there is no cost to Shelley Adelson to stick with this yeah, why, and, hope why that, and hope that Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan pull something off. Well, Here, the, the, Here's the problem. Yeah. It, let's say they do pull it off. Let's say they pass a clean debt ceiling. Mm -hmm. and, and so that crisis goes away. And, and I have something to say about that in a minute. But they, they get that crisis put behind them. And then they actually do uh, pass a bill in both houses that cuts taxes for billionaires. It right. gives Shelley Adelson what he wants. Everything he wants, right. And you take that to Donald Trump for, for a signature. Who's going to stand behind Donald Trump while he signs that? Everybody? Nope. Are Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell going to stand and get their picture taken? Let me... Paul, Paul Ryan is running for, you know, he's a House member. He's running for re-election. He's got a significant <laughs> uh, uh, opponent this time. He's got Iron Stash running against him. They're, it's getting yes, a does. lot of media. Mm -hmm. Is he going to stand behind Donald Trump while, and smile while they sign the tax cut for billionaires? While they Why sign wouldn't... off she Shelley Adelson's tax cut? Does Why he have wouldn't... a choice? No. I, let me let me try this angle on that because that's a really good point. Um, I can't quite think of the name of the book, but I'm sure it was science fiction. But it's it's it was an insight into a fictional insight into how big money works. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a diamond as big as the Ritz kind mm -hmm. of money. Right. Not. You know, well, crap, if we don't, if we, you know, either we do it now or we do it next week and might have the money. No, if you can take an entire political party right, and put it just as one of your investments mm -hmm. and have it in a portfolio and maybe it performs and maybe it doesn't. You come around, you nudge it and you push it around along with all your other investments. And you've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. What do you care? What do you care about one election? The, yeah. the, yeah. the thing yeah. that happened to the Republican Party was this. They turned the Republican base. They they cultivated the Republican base into reprogrammable meatheads mm -hmm. who, would, who would do anything that Fox News told them, believe anything, forget what they said yesterday, forget the consequences of their actions, ignore. And, and they got the press to go along with it. They got the media to agree to some you know, horrific secret uh, um, um, conspiracy Bargain. Bargain. to yeah. never talk about what you know, Newt Gingrich said last week, ever, right. Right. never. They never bring the shit up. And obviously that's corporate policy because that's the way it goes. This last Sunday, Chuck Todd, through clenched teeth, said, well, basically, um, the Republican Party was great before 2015. Yeah, yeah. You and know, you could so, barely spit that out. It was hard for him. You know? and, and so the problem that they're facing, right, that all these people are facing. And remember, the, the, the owners of the party are not facing these problems because they don't care. They'll wait another 10 years. Um but the problem that they that Chuck Todd and, and the people who do the bidding of those people, the people who are answerable, people who can be fired, the people who can lose their job if they don't tow a line somewhere, mm -hmm. they they have spent the last decade splitting time down the middle. It's always both sides. Everything's mm -hmm. both. That's been mm -hmm. the universal excuse for everything. We're going to talk about that in just a minute and how that blew up in their face. But that excuse exhausted itself this week. Now, it'll be back, but suddenly saying both sides marked you as a Nazi sympathizer. So the, they had to figure out a different way to exonerate their friends. So Chuck Todd just drew an arbitrary line on the calendar and said, well, everything that happened before 2015 doesn't count. Before? 2015. Before, before Donald, Donald Trump, Trump came down the escalator. Before Donald Trump, everything was fucking fine. Yep. It's all on him. It's all him. So the I, whole idea is to exonerate the people who fund the party, the people who run things, mm -hmm. the people who... Mm -hmm who damn well know what they're doing because they built a party out of reprogrammable meatheads. Mm -hmm. And they were supposed to be able to turn that party over to Marco Rubio. Or Jeb Bush. Or Ted yep. Cruz. Yep, yep. Or, or, uh, or Jeb Bush or somebody. Right. Somebody right. reliable who would get them everything they wanted and use the racists and use the Nazis without having to bring them to the surface and let everyone see what was really going on below mm -hmm. the hood. That's mm -hmm. always been the decision. The problem was they created the perfect feeding ground for a con man. A yes. better con man. They did. So Donald Trump just came in and said, oh, fuck it. I'll just tell you. I'll, I don't need to be constrained by anything. 
I'll tell these morons everything they want to hear. I'll tell them that immigrants are rapists. I'll tell them that that is, uh, ISIS is coming over the border. I'll tell them uh, I'll bring coal jobs back. What the fuck do you want to hear? Tell me what you want to hear. I'll tell you. A, a, a more competent, accomplished liar who's willing to tell bigger and more phenomenal and fantastical lies than Jeb Bush ever dared to mm-hmm. came along and took the morons away from them. Mm-hmm. It didn't mm-hmm. steal the party. The party was was made ready. I mean, the, the the George Bush was this was the was the John the Baptist of Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. made that place ready for them. Karl Rove made it ready for Donald Trump. Um, um, Lee Atwater made straight the way for Donald Trump. The, all these prophets of the Republican Party made everything ready for a, a, a liar and a racist and a lunatic like Trump to come along. But once he came along, they couldn't control it. Right. Well, that's true. But I think there's something even deeper than that going on, too. We have to remember. Go ahead. Finish up. Yeah. Just finish one more thing. You say uh, you put Nazis in the mix. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that changes everything. Well, let me take you back 10 years. Yeah. You put torture, you put torture in the mix. Yep. And war crimes in the mix, and that's that's about as un-American as you can get. What was the reaction from the media? Exactly the Both same. Both sides. You exactly. Know, it's the controversial. Same as Nazi. Yeah. It was right. Pe- right. It, Peggy Noonan yeah. saying, "Oh, I don't think we should talk about that." Right. That's right. just a few people over there. I think we should just ignore that and move on and not it's talk too about that. It's unpleasant to anymore. talk about, and it's right. not who we are. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the right. lie right. that this was some sort of anomaly. And yeah. not an actual outgrowth of Republican policy right. was permitted to stand because it really freaked everyone out mm-hmm. who was who, who goes. This to is who parties. America is. There's a this... segment of America that is thinks this is great. Right. Yep. And so you can. Uh, these are the same Listen, people. Who oh, freak... excuse me. Let's not forget that Sean Hannity hasn't been waterboarded yet. No. And right? and damn well should be. Yeah. Uh, and he's still looking for the web. Was it's, this is he's still deal. looking. Right. Well, he's still looking for the WMDs in Syria. Which he's sure they're in Syria. Absolutely yeah. sure they're there. Yeah. But the the point being, you you bring along torture and the the destruction of an American city mm-hmm. under the administration of a monumentally incompetent, criminally uh, negligent asshole like George Bush and a, a truly evil person like Dick Cheney. And you think, well, that's unforgivable. But no, the people no. who fund it were like, no, we'll just sit out an election cycle. We'll just sit mm-hmm. this one out. We'll let, yep. we'll, let them, we'll let them run around in circles and get exhausted. Then we'll come up with this excuse-making machine called the Tea Party. Mm-hmm. And then we'll let everybody off the hook. And all the clowns who rolled over in the media for George Bush will get on board because they're complicit too. Nobody wants to start judging people on their level of complicity because if mm-hmm. that were true, Chuck Todd would be out of a fucking job. David Gregory would never work again. You know, The entire mainstream media would be unemployed. So they're all like, oh, yeah, let's all agree not to talk about the shit we did last night. Except that, except yeah. that, the person who was more than willing to talk about the shit they did last night was Donald Trump. Yes. Remember that debate where he Absolutely. went ran over Jeb Bush and said, yep. your brother did not keep us safe. Right. He's responsible for 9-11. Yeah. And I, I remember all this stuff that he he ignored the warnings and he didn't keep us safe. They, we were attacked under your your brother. And uh, telling Rubio and... and uh, um, some of his other opponents said, you know, it's all just a blur now. But Yeah, they're all just you know, big. But calling them all out and saying, you, speaking for Republican base voters who were embarrassed by the Bush administration and saying, I'm not that party. Exactly. I'm a winner. Exactly. And I'm not going to lose like John McCain did. And I'm not going to lose like Mitt Romney did. And I'm going to call out Fox News for... Their bias, quote unquote, you know, uh-huh. and do the bleed and insult uh, Megan Kelly uh-huh. to her face because she's a chick and she's from Fox and I can do that. Mm-hmm. And so you will never be wrong, voter, if you're with me. Cause and that's, I'm, you know, and and that was the promise that Karl Rove made that we will never lose again. We will never lose yeah, again. Permanent Republican majority. We can be yeah. as shitty and awful and criminal and nuts as we can because we're going to have a permanent majority. So just go ahead and let your dick out. Go ahead and let your gut hang out. Because nobody will be around to judge you. Nobody, you're never going to, no one will ever be above us again and be able to look down and judge us by the shit we do. So just let it all hang out. And they did. And then they lost. Yeah. And yeah. then they lost. And that's where the Republican Party lost its base for a minute. Because well, they and they like, lost, and shit, they lost Fox News when they lied. Fox News lied to them. Yes. On that election Mitt night. Romney was going to win. Mitt Romney was going to beat Obama because Obama's Satan incarnate. And so we're going to win with Romney, and you can count on that. You can take that to the bank. But but the formulation here is not that base voters suddenly had an attack of conscience. 
Right. It's quite right. the opposite. You promised us an indestructible alibi for us being assholes, obedient, racist assholes, and you failed us. Mm -hmm. Our alibi fell through. These fucking liberals are laughing at us. We look like fools now. Mm -hmm. And along comes Donald Trump and says, oh, no, it wasn't your fault. Yeah. It wasn't your yeah. fault. It was know. Jeb Bush's fault. It was it the was Jeb Bush Bush's cabal fault. And his yeah. brother's fault. It wasn't your fault. You know, Rube from Sister Fuck Arkansas, moron from a, from a coal yeah. mine who thinks those jobs are coming back. It wasn't yeah. your fault. Yep. It was yep. their yep. fault. It was it's those another get-out-of-jail-free card that he's waving around like his dick. And they're Absolutely. like, yeah, baby, yeah, well, I'm yeah. voting for this guy because yeah. this guy said all the shit I did, I didn't do. Right. So I like that. I like that. I used to, I used to tune into Fox for that, but they're, they, they've they fallen down on the job They let now. me down, this, yeah. This Breitbart yeah. thing, I'm kind of liking that because they never hold me to blame for anything. Yeah. And that's the allure. And that, those people are still there. So the, the money people at the top can just wait this out. Yeah. You know, this this will pass and, and uh, some new faces will come and go and some people lose their jobs and the same. But the same core of reprogrammable morons at the Republican case will still be there in two years. It will still be there in four years. And you've said this before. The thing that will change things are demographics. Yep. Yep. These people have to die off over the course of time. They're old, they're bitter, they're white, and they're mostly men, and they're going to die off over the course of time. But they're never letting go of the idea that they deserve to be right, however yep. wrong they are. Yep. They deserve to be on top, and they deserve to be right, and they deserve everyone else bowing down. And if that party – and they will follow any party who promises them, them that as, it's, as their final reward, as their outcome, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which leads us to Mitch McConnell. Yes, of <laughs> who, Kentucky. Uh, of Kentucky, who has not been a good boy. Mm -hmm. He's been a bad boy. He said something mean about the dear leader. So he Mitch did. McConnell had to spend a day in the barrel along with his wife. Yep. This is the part. This is when you knew the week was starting to jump it hard because mm -hmm. because uh, Donald Trump made Mitch McConnell's wife trot out and act as a prop during his psycho press conference. Mm -hmm. And if she had. Well, first of all, if she had a shred of dignity, she wouldn't be associated with Mitch McConnell. <laughs> it's a, soul, a soulless monster. Yep, yep. But but she she let herself be used as a prop for the worst human being to ever be president of the United States, and sat there and took it and took it and took it because that's the price when you work for the mob, man. When you work for the organization, when you work for Trump, that's the price. You will swallow shit all day long, and the shit's going to get uglier and meaner and crazier, and you'll just sit there and fucking take it. And you know what's going to happen at the end of the day? He's going to wipe his ass with you and throw you away anyway. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. and that's what the base loves about him. Yep. He just shits on everybody. And that's what they wish they could do. I, I've said this before, and I will say it again a uh, hundred times. Do not underestimate how much these people hate this country. Yep. And yep. they elected a guy who hates this country every bit as much as they do. And they want to – if they can't own it, if they can't uh, uh, squeeze it dry, they want to fuck it to death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's mm -hmm. where we stand. And that's what gets you Mitch McConnell. Um I got to give a tip of the hat to the Baltimore mayor. You, yeah. You mentioned yeah. this when we were talking. This week. She's right awesome. This gal? Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, the mayor of Baltimore in the middle of the night pulled a, uh, I said it was a mayor. It was like Mayor Daly with an airport. And a big spiel. Yeah. Very, was, very briefly. Uh, not, was it old Daly or was it young Daly? Young Daly. It was, it was R2D2. Young Daly. Yeah. R2D2. R2D2. Uh, middle of the night. There's an airstrip out on Lake Michigan. He, he he wanted it to be a park. Yeah, northerly. It was supposed to be northerly island, and it, there was a little executive airport out there. He didn't want it. So um, one morning you woke up and it was crumbled and all bulldozed up. He bulldozed the runways, so it couldn't yeah. be used anymore. And it was like, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, homeland security. Uh, security is very dangerous out there. I just had to do it. And everybody said, okay, what? well, that, <laughs> a you broke the law. At B, you know, the like nine different federal laws, but it was like, fuck you, it's done. It's done. You know, too late. The deed is done. Late. There's nothing you can do yeah. about it. And yeah. and the mayor of Baltimore just went out in the middle of the night and just took that shit down, man. Took yep. that shit down. And by the way, the the title of our podcast this week, I think we should tell people. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you try to come up with a title that reflects the mood of, of the, the, the week we're having. And the title this week is The Last Confederate Monument. Yep. Because the last Confederate mon monument in the United States is the Republican Party. Is the Republican Party? It is. It is. The, it is Trump's that group of people. Davis. And I don't care if they were Democrats in 1957, Fuck or if we're. Yeah, I don't care about that. Yeah. Uh, they have come. They've worked really hard to become the party of Jefferson Davis and absorb the South and absorb the Klan and absorb on purpose, deliberately as part of a Southern strategy. 
that's been going on for half a century and everyone knows about it. And if you don't know about it, it's because you don't want to know about it because mm -hmm. you're alive. And to be able to look at yourself in the mirror, you have to pretend it didn't happen or it isn't happening anymore. But the GOP is the last Confederate monument in this country. It's the biggest Confederate monument in this country. It has to come down. It has to be bulldozed. And it has something else has to be erected in its place. But it cannot be allowed to stand because they elected the worst human being imaginable who has been a shithole every day of his, his campaign. And they voted for him. And he's, been, he's been worse every day of his administration. And they're mm -hmm. totally cool with that. And, and it's time to stop pretending. Whoever listens to this podcast in the media, it, you damn well know it's time to stop pretending the problem is, is the guy at the top of the ticket. It's the base of the party. They're the problem. And you still depend on them to buy dick pills and reverse mortgages on your network so you don't ever insult them by name. But you goddamn well know they're the problem. And until we start saying the Republican Party is broken because it's full of fucking Republicans, nothing is going to change. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. let's move on, shall we? To happier time. Well, uh, I just wanted to let you know Hugh Hewitt is trending. I know. I saw it. Because he, he, he's convinced that influential activist bundlers, influencers, are their support for Donald Trump has increased over this week. Yes. Well, I told people, yeah. don't be hard on Hugh Hewitt. I, he is just a cyborg, a, a humble yeah, cyborg. He's a cyborg future. sent from the future to destroy America. Destroy America. Yeah. And he can't help but <laughs> does. That's, who, that's how he's been programmed. He, that's getting, what he does. getting back to the debt ceiling for just yeah. a moment. This is yeah. really brief, and, but it, it has been on my mind. Uh, over the course of this week, I've had to stay at a hotel yeah. and, uh, of course, get USA Today, which is just, I'm sorry, it's the worst newspaper. It is just so bad. You know, the day Wednesday morning after Trump had reversed any imagined progress he had made hmm. with his uh, hostage, you know, speech he gave on Monday of Nazism being bad. Uh, Tuesday, he just reversed all that and said both sides, both sides are good, have good people in them. And that the people that have written to us and said both sides uh, is now dead are dead wrong. It well, is not their hearts are in the right place. Away. Their, heart their is hearts the right are place. in the right place. It but should be. Ed. It should. We've it should seen be. this before <laughs> enough yeah. times to yeah. know that this is this is the most lucrative lie the media tells. Absolutely. Both sides are equally bad, and, and it will be back. And the most necessary. The yeah. mo it is the most necessary, the most lucrative, and the most uh, the the worst of all the lies. I've said this. But you know times. what? Both sides don't do. Both uh, sides don't hold the debt ceiling hostage on purpose. You know, but maybe we should start. Sometimes thinking. they vote against raising the debt ceiling as a protest if they know, like Barack Obama did once, if they know it's going to pass anyway okay. as a way of making a statement. You let but, your your Senate, your caucus, yep. figures out how much how many votes they need, and, and then. They they yeah. let the people who they don't need off the hook and go out and make an incendiary statement. And we'll, we'll carry the water on this one. And that's how politics works. You know, you everybody gets a turn to stand up and make a big speech or whatever and, and, and be let off the hook for votes that are going to kill them. But both if, sides do not engage in brinkmanship over the credit worthy nation of the United States. They yeah. don't mess with that. Yeah. Well, once again, we are lurching toward as... USA Today says Congress is lurching toward a last-minute vote to raise the debt limit. And everyone knows when you listen about this story that there is this date, and it's either September 30th or October 15th or whatever it is, the absolute last day that you've got to raise the limit or the United States goes into default. Right. And the global economy starts to tailspin. But... It turns out that that is with the extensions that the government has already played out from March. Mm -hmm. The government hit their debt ceiling in March. Now, this debt ceiling, first of all, is an imaginary thing. You right. can, we're the only country in the world that does this, right. that has this kind of place where Congress has to vote in order to borrow more money. You know what, can, I, can I do a little shout out existing here? existing bills, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. It reminds me of, of the computer in the um, in the uh, uh, cave on Lost, mm -hmm. where every, mm -hmm. 108, under 100, every 104 minutes you have to type in a string of numbers or the entire island will blow up. Mm -hmm. There's no reason, well, I mean, there are a lot of reasons, but in our economy, in our government, there's no reason to have this. this Except for politics. This Except that they like to make a stand. Every, yeah. Right. And so, uh, and it's supposed, it is a ruse to pretend that Congress has some sort of say and also some sort of fiscal responsibility for mm -hmm. debt. Uh, so uh, Mnuchin 
And any Treasury Secretary that had to deal with this, whatever it was, if the Congress didn't pass this, but in this case it is Mnuchin, uh-huh. uh, has had to do short-term measures, including postponing paying into the federal government employee retirement program. Uh-huh. They just stop paying that into that and owe that retirement fund money, uh-huh. which they have to pay interest on. All of the and, and and other things and but all of this kind of finagling from March until October costs taxpayers two point five billion with a B dollars mm-hmm. in the course of a six month period, and uh, you know as USA Today, which also said that uh, on as I said on Wednesday their headline was Donald Trump returns to his bombastic style. Yeah. Something to that effect. You know, it's just like we have the old Donald Trump back, yeah. not, you know, president goes full Nazi right alt right yeah. white supremacist, which president loses quite, shit yeah. on TV. Right. Right. Yeah. No, this is uh, making sure that we report the controversy, which I've got yeah, again. USA Today today, controversial leader Steve Bannon. Yeah. You know, for a controversial White House employee Steve Bannon has left the White House. <laughs> and I keep tweeting back with that picture of Samuel L. Johnson yeah. saying, Say controversial one more goddamn time. That's you know? Right. He's not well, controversial well, among sane people. No, no. Uh all right, so the USA Today says that money could have been used for a program that benefits Americans. It could have. It could have. So uh but but to me it just when I read that sitting in the, you know, eating oatmeal in the hotel breakfast bar. Um, yeah. When are we, we going to hit our own debt limit? None of this is money. No. You know, none of this is real money to these folks. This no. Is, this doesn't affect, as you say, this doesn't affect Shelley Adelson's bottom line. Oh, God, no. This God, doesn't no. affect Steve Mnuchin's bottom line of his checkbook. No. He's getting paid. And his taxes aren't going to go up under Trump. So uh, it's all imaginary. I guess that that's my point. And again, I, I, said, I apologize last week for feeling as though I was presenting myself as somehow throwing up my hands and being negative all the time and i'm Mm -hmm. trying not to do that uh cynical my my cynicism is showing but this isn't real money they don't care you know care and and don't let anyone ever tell you i mean i bring this up when somebody starts saying they're concerned about the debt yeah when some republican says they're concerned about the debt really because steve mnuchin had to pay an extra 2.5 billion Mm dollars in interest to the retirement program of the federal government because you guys wouldn't pass just a debt ceiling increase because you know you had better things to do in march you had, on- you had to be taking away health insurance from poor kids honestly if if you have weathered a tornado mm-hmm. every month for the last 20 years mm-hmm. and you see clouds swarming on the horizon it's not skepticism that drives mm-hmm. you to the storm shelter right it's right holy shit here we go again we have right. seen this before you right. and i have seen this before over and over mm-hmm. again this mm-hmm. is how play this is how these people are going to react this is what these people are going to do this is how these people are going to lie this this is how the excuses will come rolling out in this way mm-hmm. the splashing sound you hear are the, are the predictable lifeboats hitting the water from all right. the people who desperately want to get out from under once right. again out from under a disaster that they created, mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. as and as as much as it is within our power to do so, we are jumping up and down, yelling with our hair on fire, saying, "Don't let them do that," because we have no power to stop them. No, but we as a party do, we as a movement do. We certainly Absolutely. we certainly have enough people to focus it like a laser on something. Well, and, and, say, and I think we do need to focus on this stupid tax cut for billionaires. Uh, now, the Democrats in the Senate have done so and, and said yeah. we are not going to go along with any tax program that cuts taxes for the rich. This is a stealth attack on Social Security and Medicare, yes. just like when Bush did it. Yep. It's a way of creating a financial crisis for the government so that you have to go after entitlements in order to make up the difference. That is the plan. That has always been the plan. And that's what they want to do. But- and Steve Mnuchin is saying the same thing that Bush's people said, which is we can get to 4% growth if, we o- if only, if only. If yeah. only we get, you know, the taxes down to a reasonable amount of money, yeah. uh, you know, a reasonable amount for the friend, my friends on the golf course. Right. Uh, 
then, you know, we'll, that's your money. And then the economy will grow some more because you'll have more money in your pocket. Well, you know what yeah. you can do? Yeah. If you just pull all the control rods out of a nuclear reactor and kill the water, <laughs> you'll get lots of electricity. It'll be lots of like <laughs> for a brief period of time. That'll probably be true. And then very sure. bad things happen after that. Very bad things happen. But you know happen. what? This is the week when Donald Trump lost his human shield for that yes, he particular did. He's, And lost lost the narrative. He did. And, well, this and is, the other – oh, go ahead. This is when – and a hat tipped Ocean's Eleven. Mm-hmm. This is when his CEOs all dropped him like third period French. Yes, right, um, right. All the people that he, I'm sure he hoped to, on meaningless councils, that he hoped to line up and say, see, I'm a business guy, business people, and everybody here is cool with deregulating the fuck out of everything, right? Yes, yes, yes. Everyone here wants their taxes cut, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hire lots of people, right? Let's get on this thing right now. Uh-uh, those people aren't there anymore because they, yeah. you know what? They started hearing from their customers and their employees saying. And their, and their stockholders. Exactly. Yeah. Ex- yeah. Saying, you're hanging with what now? Uh-huh. You're you're associating our brand with Nazis? Really? Really? Mm-hmm. And and the Arts Council all resigned today. Yes. And did you notice, uh, so, <laughs> someone very smart on Twitter noticed uh-huh. that the first letter of each paragraph of their resignation letter spelled resist. Yeah. And this fuck. Arts Council is an actual agency of the federal government. This isn't some imaginary group of business people from Trump world. This was set up by Reagan. These are government. This is a government organization. So this is the first government department. And it's they just, may be volunteers and they may be honorary and they may be this, that, and the other. Is, yeah. Right. Yeah. But this is an actual thing that a, a council that has been established for years and this is the first one that en masse quit. Yep. And it's the artists. Of course yep. it is. But and and like I said, they wrote this resist letter, which is awesome. Um, all right. I, one other thing is uh, the Goldman Sachs bankers in the White House. Yeah, you know, this is this is the thing. Um, Jim Hightower has an article out this week about how uh, the big banks switched from mortgage based securities to car loans. And they are now and have been packaging car loans as investments in the stock market. Wow. And they apparently, you know, because they were allowed to, took full advantage of the housing crisis and bought up properties en masse in in areas, in in, um, suburban areas, in cities. And uh, I I think he was talking about Nashville, Tennessee, or... Or maybe it was somewhere in Kentucky where um, one bank owns 70 percent of the rental properties. Yeah. And when that happens, you can just raise the rent every year. It's no big deal because the the place across the street is raised, too, because we own everything. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, called an oligarchy. It's called an oligarchy and it's it's called uh, abandoning the American dream of homeownership. Oh, yeah. And saying that's not normal anymore. Right. What is normal is you rent from us and you expect as the cost of having a roof over your head that the rent's going to go up every year. And every town becomes a company town. A company town. And every exactly. Every store becomes the company store. Yep. Yep. And, you know, that sold my soul to the company store. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, Donald Trump was right. The whole game's rigged. It's rigged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by by all of his friends. By all of his friends. By yeah. Steve Mnuchin. And then, you know, you bring in Steve Mnuchin and four other Goldman Sachs guys to run the economy for you. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen? Well, and and what's going to happen is Donald Trump's taxes are going to get cut. Yeah. And first, uh, no, no Steve Mnuchin isn't asking to see Donald Trump's taxes from Russia. He doesn't need to see that. No. So uh, where are we on our notes, though, Driftglass? Well, I'd like to, to point out uh, a, a little staff stuff that's coming okay. out. Okay. Um, because everyone in the White House leaks all the time. And one of the biggest leakers is now going to be working at Breitbart, I believe, yeah. <laughs> Steve Bannon, and will probably turn his guns on the White House or not, depending on what the, the agenda is. But it, that's all. This is just, you know, Nazis fighting Nazis. And I couldn't be happier. Um, but the staffers, uh, the ones who are, are refusing to quit for some reason, uh, A, obviously don't have a conscience or someplace else to go, but are leaking out, you know, that that um, he uh, Trump is stubborn and doesn't realize how bad this is getting. Uh, there's one White House advisor said that he's just his anger is is always there. He's becoming irritated with the staffers. He's escalating fights because he doesn't like being told what to do. Mm-hmm. And that while well, he went rogue on Tuesday he did. as well. And right? the staff said 
I mean, staff reports where they were stunned and disheartened because yeah. this was a meeting that was supposed to be on infrastructure. They had it all lined up. They had it all set. It was going to, was going to come out. He was going to do his, you know, statement and waving things and, and people were going to go, yeah. And his paid, you know, hacks were going to applaud because that's who he puts mm-hmm. in the audience and to applaud him. And because... all he had to say to make people like, uh, you know, Bob Corker happy is I stand by my statement yesterday. Right, what he it. said Monday when he was under stress to read what the right thing to say is. When they made him do it. When, when they, they made, made him do him it. Read this thing, the Beltway would have just gone, okay, we're going to accept that. Because that's I what we do. by my statement yesterday. Because that's, that's all he had to say. That's what they do. The, you know, the, the minute, and this goes all the way back to the Bush administration, goes back to the Clinton administration. Mm-hmm. The minute you say the magic words that the media wants to hear, mm-hmm. you're forgiven. Right. Uh, if you're a Republican, if you're a Democrat, it doesn't matter how fucking right you are. It doesn't matter that Hillary Clinton warned you about everything Trump is doing. It doesn't matter how pristine you are. It doesn't matter how many different ways you apologize for wearing a tan suit or, or calling a cop stupid for arresting Kip, Skip Gates in his own home, you will never be forgiven because you're a Democrat. But if you're a Republican, just say the magic words and we'll let you off the hook. So he said the magic words and everything's going to be fine. And then he came down and it wasn't an accident because he had his own remarks pre-printed in 70 point font in his fucking suit, ca- suit jacket. So he knew he was going to come down and start reopening this issue because he was right and everybody was wrong. And he mm-hmm. and and if you didn't see it, well, you missed a historic, you know, um, watching Nixon shove his press secretary out to the wolves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is nothing compared to that because this wasn't a press secretary. This was as if Nixon had lost his mind on stage mm-hmm. and was like, fuck, yeah, I did it. I taped everybody. I want you all dead. I want. And that's how bad it was. And it mm-hmm. kept going and going. And you know what happened? Nobody on the staff interceded and said no nope. they looked down at the done. floor and and were very disappointed yes because and i believe me having been, having worked in and around government and watched elected officials and watched appointed officials lose their shit and get in over their head usually a staffer will intercede step in between the media and the the person who's about who's having their their head taken off and say, and we're done. Mm-hmm. Questions are done. We're done. This is yep. what we're this, out of time. There's well, all kinds what, of ways you can say it. This is right. what Rex Tillerson's people did all the time. Yeah. This is why we're you can't get a call from him yeah. for weeks. He's, oh, I'm sorry, we're not taking any questions. But no, mm-hmm. Donald Trump himself wanted to come out and explain that Nazis are there's plenty of nice people among the Nazis. Mm-hmm. And the and white don't forget they applied for a permit. They did. They did. And boy, wasn't that just a meme waiting to happen? Yeah. Um, I yeah. think Patton Oswald uh tweeting out um Indiana Jones beating up a Nazi, you know, <laughs> college professor, Antifa college professor cruelly abuses Nazi who had a permit. Yep. Um, yep. Just it just went on and on. And and it was and his staff were just blown out because they, 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 they clearly didn't realize what everybody outside, uh, certainly everyone on the left realizes is you work for a racist lunatic and he's going to keep right on being a racist lunatic. And we've and, known that about him since the 70s. Yeah. And we so, know, yeah. And we know that sixty-seven percent of your party, two-thirds of the Republican Party, approve of what he does, like mm-hmm. him that way. And the other mm-hmm. third just want their goddamn taxes cut and don't want people reminding them that they voted Republican. Well, and again, <laughs> again, and again, I want to know what's the signing ceremony? What's the end game of that bill? Where is it going to go? Mm-hmm. You're going to have him, you know, uh, pocket veto that one or pocket sign that one and not have a ceremony with tax cuts at the center? You think he's going to just sign it in private and walk away? Well, no, he's going to want to have a big ceremony, a televised ceremony with you, Mitch McConnell, and you, Paul Ryan, standing behind him applauding. Oh, they'll do it. I mean, I, that, that's what I don't get. So what? Well, then they'll Paul Ryan it. can say goodbye to his job. Maybe, maybe not. If he's not, if he's, yeah, because he might be so, he might be so gerrymandered. He's yeah, I, 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 I have no, I, Mitch McConnell, nobody's going to vote Mitch McConnell out of office. Yeah, right. uh, the people of Kentucky love their racist, you know. They do. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, so, and you know, and this... Paul Ryan is never going to vote for abortion, so those Catholic Germans in wherever that Wisconsin town is, you know, are going to go all the well, way for for that. And so, let's go back yeah. to Eugene Robinson. This this. Yeah. Right. Surely right. now we have gone too far. Any no, statement that begins yeah. with history will remember is just bullshit. As long mm-hmm. as we have a media who will obligingly forget what you did. 
and and sweep it under the rug. And and the only people who will talk about it are you know are John Stewart and Stephen mm-hmm. Colbert. Uh, mm-hmm. As long as that those people own and, the media and Tina Fey <laughs> and Tina Fey, <laughs> Tina Fey and, and her sheet caking. I would like I would like to point out that this this week was so bad that David Brooks, who last week swore off ever writing about conservatism and politics ever mm-hmm. again, mm-hmm. swore off not writing about conservatism and politics. Okay, he, he unquit so he could go back to both sidering. Oh my God! So he could go back to you know you know both sides. You know, really, it's it's you know these these things that and and it's it really is, it, it is this. I've said this before also. It is this incredibly powerful MRI that we we're all going through, mm-hmm. and and you can really see where people and institutions stand and what they stand for. And you can re- if you just look, all you got to do is look. You can really see what a soulless hack that David Brooks is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely mm-hmm. nothing motivating him mm-hmm. beyond pleasing the tiny group of wealthy plutocrats who read his column and ride the train with him up and down the Acela Corridor and college presidents and people who set up TED Talks. And they all want to believe that there is this magic group of learned people out there who are loosely attached to the conservative movement who can who who are somehow immune and above all this stuff and then that what's happening at the trump white house isn't the real republican party Mm -hmm. and as Mm -hmm. long as those deluded rich assholes want to believe that david brooks is going to go right on telling them exactly what they want to hear well and i wonder if david brooks didn't get called on the carpet or get a phone call from somebody upstairs yeah. saying you can't not write about politics that's your job well I've just, but his answer to that is is both sides okay great should, i'll go back to writing about politics i'll write about both sides it's about modesty how everyone yeah. needs modesty we need to be more modest because you know what during on on normandy on d-day the yeah, thing that everybody moved, was <laughs> it, that's what say that's what beat the nazis was modesty was it yeah. was epistemological modesty and well i will say in 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 argument with that, however, that, you know, Eisenhower did write his letter of resignation that day as oh, well, sure. if it failed. Personal so, modesty. You know, personal modesty is fine. It's a question of let's distract everybody from the Nazi shit gimmick in the White House. It wasn't talk like about personal, our own modesty as a way of avoiding. No, Eisenhower yeah. didn't tell the troops, let's all sit here in England and think on our sins. Yeah, no. You no, know, let's all let's all understand, you know, the every side of every issue and let's not be so so brash and sort of sort of um sure of ourselves that we should cross the channel and take these people because you know, sure. really there's a lot of crazy on both sides. As I said on Twitter, um the arc of the moral universe does bend towards justice, but occasionally yep. it requires several hundred thousand armed federal troops to bend it in that direction. Exactly. And exactly. that's something that our friends in the media don't want. Every time they invoke Lincoln, I'm like, you mean Abraham Lincoln, the guy who and the is, and the Union Army, yeah. right? You mean that, that burned Lincoln? down Atlanta? That one? You mean yeah. that? You know, wishful thinking and modesty did not stop the fucking Nazis. No, and the and U.S. As Army we said and, last week, as we said last week, they were not allowed to come into the Union in time to rescind no. the Thirteenth Amendment. It was a requirement. The here's your compromise. The compromise is you come in and we they, you have to ratify the Thirteenth Amendment to be back with us. Yeah, no, we're not going to do that. No, yeah, no, yeah. we're not. And that's but that's again, er, everyone and every institution is being thoroughly X-rayed, yeah. and you can see who and what they are. And the squirmy little both siderists who are so desperate not to be judged or have anyone judge them or have anyone bring up. Matthew Dowd? Oh, you're talking about? Well, I I wasn't going to bring it up, but sure. Yeah. (laughs) Matthew Dowd suddenly really thinks the worst thing you could do if you're a Democrat and you were thinking of the first strategy, for an electoral strategy, the worst strategy in the world is just is to like rub someone's nose in the fact that they didn't vote against Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because, of course, Matthew Dowd was proud of the fact that he voted for neither Hillary nor Donald Trump. He did. He refused to participate in the corrupt duopoly. And now that it turns out for the millionth time, the left was right all along. He, this, this very out and proud Catholic who, who puts up a sermon every goddamn day in his Twitter feed, um, apparently has lost the ability to confess or mm-hmm. atone or repent because mm-hmm. that's for other people confessing yep. that you fucked up real bad. And that maybe you shouldn't have pissed your vote away. And maybe it was a really dumb idea to play this goddamn both sides game all this time to the point where, hell, why not? 
You know, no mm-hmm. one's going to hold us accountable for anything. And Hillary has those emails. So why the fuck shouldn't we? Playing that game had enormous tragic consequences. And the people who played it will not own it. And that's why right. it's up to us to really, really rub their nose in it. Until... Well, and this is Melissa Francis on Fox as yeah. well, oh, crying God. that she's being judged Talk for about... defending Donald Trump's both sider statement and that what's in her heart is really good and, and not racist at all. And people are judged. I just feel like people are judging me. Yeah, that, that was and... a... To give us some context, that was the crotch couch on Fox. Yes, it is. It's outnumbered, the crotch couch. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she's got she's got to be real careful when she cries because you don't want her lash to fall off right. and fall into her into her panties because the idea her that skirt the, is up to her crotch. She didn't, right? want to, she didn't want to talk about them Nazis, but then it was, you know, no, they were really bad. They were really there. And she just started weeping. And said, I'm not a bad person. I'm a good person inside. I feel people are judging me. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we are. are. You work in a whorehouse. You, a lot. you work yep. in a whorehouse and you lie for a living. Yes, we well, are very and, different. And let's let's talk about the people that you've lied about as an employee of Fox. Yeah. yeah. You've lied about Barack Obama. Uh-huh. You've lied about food stamp recipients. Why not you've Michelle lied Obama? about the war in Iraq. Yeah. You've you know, we can go on and on and talk about all of the things that you've done to judge other people. Yeah. To pass judgment. I mean, particularly outnumbered is all about women sitting in mini skirts on couches and having that frowny face about what the world is like today and how I raise my kids Mm -hmm. and we should, 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 should it's, it is a, it is the women's middle of the day hour on Fox for, you know, the men are watching the the thighs and the women, it's a, it's a woman's show. You know, there's one guy and four women and the four women are supposed to be speaking for women, you know, about how you raise your kids with values. And some people just don't. Mm -hmm. And I've heard some people say that Donald Trump is just a great president. I've heard some people say Barack Obama is not a good president. Yeah, right. Yeah. So this this has been going on, you know, for she's been her job is to judge people that Fox wants their audience to hate. And and shake her head and and be very judgy. And you know what? Now the bell tolls for thee, and she's all yeah. she's like like America's newest favorite Nazi on on you know <laughs> and he had a warrant and I'm yeah. under arrest. I'm very afraid. I'm going to be right under now. arrest and go to jail. I'm very yeah. afraid. I had a permit and everything. I, I tried so hard to be peaceful. And and no, that's bullshit. And you're a pussy. And you're and you're we've exactly. Got, we've got lots of video of you. I love the guy who edited the video back and forth between yep. him weeping yep. over he we had there's a warrant out for his arrest I'm very and he, sad. you know he tries to be a good person do everything according to the law and then he's marching shirtless through the street saying he's going to kill people yeah 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 and so, so and, and there was a lot more so you know that's who these people are okay mm-hmm. there aren't any in, in a crowd full of the, what I think Charlie Pierce called the citronella ss um, <laughs> and a crowd full of cheeky torch carrying nazi and skinheads and Klansmen and free-floating militia nuts who came armed to the teeth. There are no good people. There are yeah. no good people in that crowd. If you're in that crowd, you're a bad person or you're a And moron. even if you've got skinny jeans and a scholarship yeah. no, to you're UVA, bad person. Bad person. tough shit, yeah. you're Sorry. a bad person. Yes. Sorry. Yes. yes. And, and, yes. and I think as long as we're parked on Fox, I think it's just incredibly important that we not, not forget that Eric Bowling is still suspended for sending dick pics around, yeah. <laughs> allegedly. Let's, let's not forget that that Bob Mueller is still doing his job. Yeah, too. all of that are in the background. Trump, Russia, Trump, Trump, Russia, Trump, Russia. Yes, okay. Around. Uh, there's a few other things we want to mention. Um, We've only this, got a few more minutes. This was the week that Trump's lawyer, mm-hmm. his personal lawyer, decided he'd jump in. He'd, you know what? I'm not getting enough love here. I'm not getting mm-hmm. enough love. So he decided to send an email out. Uh, saying that Black Lives Matter has been infiltrated by terrorist groups and the Confederacy was the same as the American Revolution because there was apparent he he said oh wait a minute every this is this is the tribe that rubs shit in its hair oh everybody's rubbing shit in their hair and I'm failing was this so Jay let, Sokolow saying this no no this was this was uh, a guy named Dowd oh the Dowd His guy personal okay. lawyer right. decided you know what now is a good time to share with you my own rustic beliefs about black people and the Confederacy <laughs> because mm-hmm. that's a great idea because they're all horrible. All of these people are horrible. All of them have to go. There's no good in there anywhere. This is a real, this is, this. I'm sorry, this is like judging Nazis. It's really easy. If you work for the White House, if you work for the Republican Party, if you are a member of that group of elected Republican officials, or you staff them, 
or you help them get elected, you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. You're a really mm -hmm. bad person. And I know you don't think that because bad people don't sit in front of a mirror twiddling their mustaches going, I was so evil today. I plan to do evil more. No, no. Bad people never think of themselves as bad. That's what. That's the secret. That's the Alan Rickman secret. Yes. Alan Rickman's secret to how you how you play a villain. Mm -hmm. Villains don't wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, "What evil can I do today?" Uh, that's a uh, psychopath. Uh. Evil people think they're doing great. Think they're doing exactly the right thing. They've got a perfect motivation for sure. defending the president, defending the party, making sure we get the tax cut fixed. And you know, making thing. sure we have tax reform to grow the economy. And right. That's the lie they tell. Here's themselves. a tell. Right. If your excuse is the Democratic Party is something, you know, the Democrat Party is the party of the Klan. Yeah. And I can show you why what you just said is bullshit. And mm -hmm. your response is not, oh, I was misled. Your response is, oh, then I must go to bullshit excuse number two and change the subject. Then you are a bad person. You have a bigoted, awful, dark little heart, and you're looking for excuses that you can present to the public for being a bad person. But you're just a bad person. Mm -hmm. And that's really the problem. You're, you're, and if you're under 20 and you believe a lot of nutty things, you'll probably get over it. If you're in your 30s and 40s or 50s or 70s or you're the 71-year-old orange racist lunatic who's the head of the United States, you're never going to get over it. You're mm -hmm. going to be a bad person probably till the day you die. And, and it's what's the name job. you have for Trump now? Oh, you uh, have a name. Bullshit Connor. Bullshit Connor. Yeah. 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 Raving yeah. racist lunatic. Uh, that nobody wants to really talk about, um, and, and yet he won't shut up about it. Um, I do want to talk, since we're talking about bad people, I want to talk about good people for a minute. Okay. Uh, a lovely I am Spartacus moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, where yes. hundreds of people lined up in front of the Durham, North Carolina County detention facility to confess, air quotes, to tearing down a Confederate monument. Yep, in order to get the woman who was arrested and is facing 49 months in jail. Uh, exonerated, exonerated, or at least, at least, felt. you know, we're, we're not going to file charges against her. That uh, you and you know, that's a really brilliant way to do it because it if you can make uh, the DA's office have all of a sudden, you know, an extra ten thousand dollars taken from their budget to process paperwork for the ninety people who confessed, right? You're you're making it hurt for them. Well, that to was press the charges against the one. Part yeah. of that was the civil rights strategy of just yep, exactly. Break the jails, fill them up. Break, break the up. jails and count them as they go in. Right. So, you know, I know Mr. Sh White Sheriff, who's, mm -hmm. you know, in the Klan and we all know it. Mm -hmm. I know exactly how many black kids you've got in that jail. And I know, you know, I know exactly how many and I'm going to count them when they come out. And that number better match. And if somebody's missing, it's on you. And speaking of and, good people, yeah. Barack Obama's Barack Obama's Charlottesville tweet mm -hmm. is now the most liked tweet in history. Yeah, which so must not much of a history of uh, not a long history for Twitter, but no. we think we think of Twitter as always being there, no. uh, and and it's not. But yeah, uh, that's that is terrific. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the you want Trump to talk about Heather Myers hire Heather Hire's mother? Oh well, I was going to go to to some lighter matters, but that, I actually okay. I'd like you to talk about that. Well. I heard the that funeral service live uh, as I was driving to and fro, and uh, it it, um, it sounded like something I would say, I was, and then all of a sudden my email blew up. Yeah, I, I was watching the same thing. This is probably why Blue Gal would like me to. Uh, I was watching uh, this this brave, um, authentic, wonderful, loving woman talk about losing her daughter and mm -hmm. how she's going to grieve about that and how. Um, we're going to make it count because she was a great person and she died doing what she loved and you will not erase her. You will amplify her. I thought, you know what? That is exactly what my wife would say. And, under and, exact and my email blew up uh -huh. because yes, uh, Mrs. Bro, her name is, her last name is Bro, Susan Bro. Uh, the, the part about her saying we're going to make the world a better place. It's our job uh, in her memory and Heather Heyer's memory we are going to make the world a better place. And the people that tried to kill her, uh, you know, illuminated her and it magnified her work. They didn't end it. And she is, uh, because of her mother, I believe, now a civil rights icon. Yep. Uh, she is a rallying cry for those who will end hate in her name. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so my email blew up a little bit. A lot ah. of people were saying, you know, uh, that, that Heather Heyer funeral, that the uh, mother sort of went full blue gal this time. It wasn't full drift glass. She was going full blue gal. So uh, I appreciate that. I I noticed it, and I didn't, you know, I didn't go. 
you know, I didn't I didn't pat myself on the back because it's no, not no. about me. No, but it, it was so. But it was it was pleasing to me that other people noticed yeah. that. Oh gosh, I where what podcast have I heard that word on before? <laughs> Those words, you know, where have I heard that before? Well, and, so, and yeah. honestly, it was uh, it was refreshing uh, in, in a horrible way. But yeah. this was the week when uh, I think a lot of people got it through their heads that it's women and minorities and minority women who mm -hmm. make the Democratic Party go. Exactly. Uh, yep. That's who we are as a party. And, and 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 the blue wave that's coming is going to come from women and people of color. And you might as well decide now as Republicans, you know, we always, we're talking about Republicans having to decide what side they're on. Mm -hmm. White Democratic men have to decide what side they're on. Mm -hmm. And if their side is we're really going to try hard to appeal to hillbilly, redneck, yeah, no. white supremacist, you know, no. Joe Sixpack, because that's the voter we need and leave behind the pussy hat rebellion it's you're gonna fail you're gonna fail and i think so, i think the person who said this really really well this week um and i'm gonna write about it because i'm a white man and therefore <laughs> i need to appropriate what someone did better than me uh it was shakespeare's sister yeah yeah because there was this there was there's this um trust fund um cage raised milk fed harvard pasty white 12 year old conservative named Julius Crean, who decided he would found a journal called American Affairs, the pro-Trump journal. And he's yeah. every bit the, the, the third generation welfare queen inbred white clown you would imagine him to be. He's, he's Hugh Hewitt minus 40 years. Yeah, he That's really is. He is. He's a preening little punk intellectual who has all the right connections has the right and, skin and color. Him, yeah. He came through Harvard. I don't know if he's trusted, but I assume he knows somebody. But because he decided to be the the authentic intellectual voice of the Trump revolution, suddenly he was everywhere. He's sitting. He's at the inauguration. He's being interviewed side by side with Andrew Sullivan. And, you know, and it's like he went from zero to prominent in no time at all with no qualifications, precisely because he's conservative, white male and well connected he then regrets what he did and, and now he's everywhere on the media and he was given space in the new york times to tell his amazing story about being wrong because the the white male conservative voice is the is the preferred voice of the media and and shakespeare's sister says look i have nothing to regret i didn't vote for this asshole where's my fucking column in the new york times and it's never going to come darling never coming because you're not white, you're not male, and you're not conservative. And those are the people who have privileged places at the seat, and it always will until the system is overturned. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week we have actually a spe very special internet dog, Noel. Noel. Noel is, as of this very week, a certified service dog. She is trained to alert her owner, who is a podcast listener, oh. by the way. To low and high blood sugar, which she can smell, mm -hmm. as well as a leaky insulin pump. She can warn about that, too. Oh, That's amazing. Cool. Yeah. She does all of this by sense of smell. And this week, Noelle received full certification from the American Kennel, Kennel I'm sorry, <laughs> from the AKC. Let's just say AKC, Ameri shall we? AKC, yeah, okay. And this week, she received full certification from the AKC that her training is complete. The picture on our Facebook page and website is of her with her ribbons of certification. Congratulations to Noelle. That's a lot of hard work on her part and to her owner for having such a wonderful dog. We're so proud. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. And don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local. We also believe in shopping Amazon with our link if your alternative is a big box store. Yeah. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, 
professionalleft.blogspot.com for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at professionalleft.blogspot.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties would like to remind you that this entire podcast is off the record. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the humping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the flower with the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.